Well, elected for vowing to crack down on spending, so why are so few willing to take a crack serving on the committee in charge of, well, all of that spending? Good luck appropriating any willing congressman to serve on the Appropriations Committee. Even my next guest, and he sleeps in his office to save the government money. Not remotely interested in serving on the committee responsible for doling out that money. Republican Congressman Jason Jaffetz of Utah joining me right now. So, Congressman, I know you've been invited. Why did you turn it down? Well, I opted for the uh, Oversight and Government Reform Committee, which I've been on, which is great because it has purview over everything. And one of the things that Republicans committed to change is the way we deal with appropriations bills on the floor of the House. Now, that may sound like insider baseball, but in my short 22, 23 months that I've been in the House of Representatives, never have been, I ever been allowed to offer an amendment on the floor of the House on any of the appropriations bills. And Republicans have promised to change that. So if if I can actually offer amendments and get on the floor and debate each of those spending bills, I don't see there's great a need to have to be actually on the subcommittee or on the committee. All right. Well, maybe that uh, makes some sense. But I'm, I'm hearing Steve King of Iowa, uh, Jim Jordan of Ohio, uh, Lynn Westmoreland of Georgia, um, Jim Jordan of, of, of Ohio, and on and on. All, all, all have, have passed up opportunities to be, uh, including Michelle Bachman, the most famous of all, I guess, to, to be on this committee, and you'd think that's where the pedal hits the spending metal, you know? Well, a lot of it does, and we got a lot of our old guard folks who have been there uh, still on that, on that committee. Well, why don't you new Turks uh, come in and say, no, there's a new posse in town? That's the committee where you can make well, a difference. I, I, I think you absolutely will see that. Not only uh, no, we're not. Some we're of not us young, it. We're young not seeing it. Unless someone's well, given a, an appropriated bonus, but it, it's not happening. What is key and fundamental here is that the House Republicans are committed to changing the way we deal with appropriations bills on the floor of the House. And when they do those 12 appropriations bills, they literally read through the thing, right. and line by line, you could go and offer an amendment and say, I object, and then offer some sort of amendment that then the rest of the members have to vote on. That's a very but powerful maybe, key. Congressman, that, there's a stig but maybe, Congressman, maybe there's a stigma attached to being on this committee, for, for good or ill, that a lot of spending goes through this committee, something spending that you might not have anything to do with. So a lot of the very shrewd incoming congressmen are saying, you know what, that's a no-win uh, being, being on that committee. I don't want any part of it. Is that what's really going on? Oh, I think, I, I think a lot of people don't want to be compromised. They don't want to go along just to get along, and they don't want to be put in a compromised position so that they feel like they have to say yes to make some sort of deal. And there, there are some of us that know that I, I wouldn't thrive in that position. There's no way I would get through that. Put, through that. So I like uh, oversight and government reform, where we can actually go out and help reform this, this government. Hey, Congresswoman, I got you. What do you think of these airport pat-downs? I mean, uh, I don't know how is it in your neck of the woods, but it's pretty unseemly. It's ridiculous. Look, the threat is very real, but what's frustrating is America is being presented a false choice. Trade your liberty in the name of security. That's a false choice. What we should be doing is profiling. I'm, I'm willing to say it. Yes, profile terrorists. Absolutely. Do what the Israelis do. Number two, have people walk through a metal detector and then buy a bomb-sniffing dog. The dog is the most effective tool that we have. The Pentagon recently re re uh, released a report and said after spending $19 billion dollars, with all the technology, the very best way to ferret out and find where, where a bomb is, it's the dog. Let's do dogs, for goodness sake. Everybody loves a dog. But does the dog have to go through the birthday suit screening process? Because we know many dogs that just say, no, that's where I draw the line. Uh, you know, these German shepherds, they're, they're nicer. They, they get a bad rap, but they're nicer than they look. All right, Congressman, thank you very, very much. Good having you.